I would like to call to order the Tuesday, September 27th, 2016 um, meeting of the Upper Arlington School. Need Andy to please um, call the roll. Mrs. Drees? Here. Mrs. Royer? Here. Mrs. Moore? Here. Mrs. Comfort? Here. Thank you. Next, we have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, next, I need a um, motion for the approval of our agenda for tonight's meeting. I'll move to approve the agenda. I'll second. Thank you. Mrs. Royer? Aye. Mrs. Drews? Aye. Mrs. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Gumper? Aye. Thank you. Next, we have a report. And Paul mm -hmm. is going to. Great. So we are here tonight to review the results of a recent telephone survey that was conducted by Fallon Research, and we're uh, honored to welcome Paul Fallon here tonight, who is the opinion researcher who was responsible for the survey. Paul, I will have you do a short, uh, just uh, some, some some information about your background by, by way of introduction, and then if you could just jump into the presentation okay. and tell us a little bit about yourself. First and foremost, thanks for having me here this evening. My name is Paul Fallon, and I'm an opinion researcher. I work for a variety of different types of clients, although many of them are public entities such as school systems, cities, counties, and state governments as well. And I do a variety of different types of research on a wide range of topics, um, including public finance and facilities. And uh, I uh, work for a lot of school districts in Ohio, although I've worked in 38 different states. I uh, am jumping on a plane tonight to fly out west, and the reason I say that is I have the rare pleasure of actually living next door to this particular client. Um, so I didn't have to fly here, which uh, was a pleasant uh, different, uh, pleasant uh, difference from how things normally operate. I live in Grandview Heights. And uh, on top of that, I've worked in this market that is in Upper Arlington since about 2005. So I've got a lot of familiarity with this community, having worked for a variety of different entities um, within it. So uh, with that, I would like to go ahead and present the results. I've got a couple of sets of results actually dating back to 2014. Uh, so let me talk about those first before I pre present the other results. Um, here are some of the things from the survey that we conducted among registered voters in our up Upper Arlington during September of 2014. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, first and foremost, one of the key findings was that voters and parents exhibited a great deal of satisfaction with the quality of education being provided by the schools. It was exceptionally high, and I probably have more clients as public school systems in Ohio than anyone else in my industry, so I have a vast basis of comparison. And, and this is really in the very upper echelon in terms of satisfaction with the quality of education. Uh, second, a plurality of the respondents even went as far as to indicate that the school system was the reason that they moved to or stayed in Upper Arlington, which suggests to me that it is an integral part of the social fabric of this community and serves as a magnet to draw and keep people here. More than half of the uh, respondents gave the school district's high mark for its work managing the system's finances, which is an unusual uh, figure in terms of uh, the level of satisfaction. Um, it's rare to see a school system with uh, about above 50%. In this case, in 2014, the uh, level of satisfaction was at 55%. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, a majority said that the district uh, listens to the public as responsive and is responsive to its needs and preferences, impressively, including two-thirds of non-parents, that is, people who at the time of the survey did not have a child enrolled in an Upper Arlington City school. So they uh, did not feel disenfranchised, which is important because that's sometimes the case in other communities because I think school districts naturally take a bifurcated approach to communication uh, which, which lends itself to uh, more attention uh, heaped upon parents rather than non-parents, but that doesn't seem to have been the case here. Pluralities of voters exhibited compl complacency with the state of the high school facilities, the junior highs and elementary schools. 
And what was interesting was that uh, outright majorities of parents concurred, suggesting that there is some apathy about building conditions that exist right now. Also, 62% uh, rejected the notion that building conditions were beginning to create unstable environments for learning. Um, and when asked in an open-ended question, fewer than half could cite a particular school building that was in the worst condition and warranted the most attention, which was another indication of how complacent people were about building conditions. And lastly, a majority agreed that new or renovated school buildings would improve the image and reputation of the community. So they did see some intrinsic benefit to doing so, even if there wasn't necessarily an urgent need at the time. The next step was uh, a focus group that we conducted last spring among registered voters, approximately half parents and half non-parents. And the purpose of focus group testing is really to test ideas. That is, I, I tell clients it's a test kitchen for evaluating new concepts before you roll them out and present them to the community. Uh, focus groups do a couple things. Uh, one of the things that is most valuable is they help you understand why people may hold opinions about complex topics. Uh, it also gives you an opportunity to get a little bit of unvarnished candor to find out how people feel about particular matters, which is important because surveys tend to rely disproportionately on closed-ended questions where there aren't opportunities for a lot of spontaneity. So this gives you a lot of extemporaneous feedback that can help paint a clearer picture. Uh, they also uh, can uh, help you understand the rationales, that is, why people hold opinions, because they're not constructed to measure, that's what surveys do, but small groups of focus group respondents talking in, in a setting like that can give you the opportunity to probe those views and learn more about them. Um, it's important to understand that the focus group session results were not generalizable. That means that we cannot make a ex statistical extrapolation to the broader community. So if eight of 10 people like something, we couldn't say that 80% of people in the community like something. It's context-based. It's not well suited for measurement. Um, it's a semi-structured type of format in which uh, there are opportunities for both discussion as well as review of handouts, which will give respondents at various points in the session in order to write down their answers to things that we think uh, they might have strong opinions about, but we also get, give them the opportunity to talk about things um, in a more free-flowing format as well to get the greatest possible candor during the course of the session. Um, a couple other things you need to know about focus groups are first and foremost, they use bl I, we use blind recruiting. That is, the respondents do not know why they've been asked to participate and they're paid in order to ensure their attendance. And the reason we do that is to avoid a self-selection bias that might be created if we just ask people who we felt were most interested in the topic because that might not necessarily yield the most useful information. So here are some of the key findings, those things that I thought were most important from the focus group that helped set the stage for the survey that we did this fall. First and foremost, uh, there was a very high level of satisfaction with the school system. Um, which is something that we observed statistically in 2014. And here's a quote in support of that. This is one respondent saying, the top, you know, the high school is number three on uh, Ohio's list out of 100, explaining why he felt very satisfied with the quality of education. Second, there was a high degree of awareness about the building revitalization plan, uh, but very little specificity. I, I would say that knowledge was a mile wide, but just about an inch deep. In fact, some people did not know that other buildings were being considered for inclusion besides the high school. Um, and they were getting their information uh, from various sources, but one respondent said they've had a lot of articles in the Upper Arlington News. We also found out that despite uh, the level of awareness and knowledge, there was a lack of urgency something we observed statistically in the survey in 2014. Uh, but they could clearly understand that there were benefits for doing so. Um, and most importantly, and this is one, probably one of the paradoxical, paradoxical aspects of focus group research is sometimes the things that people don't say are the most important things you learn from a focus group. And nobody said during the course of the session, none of this needs to be done. This is too grandiose, it's not worth doing. That never occurred at any point in the session, despite uh, a, a very freewheeling discussion. Um, 
Also, uh, most of the respondents agreed that the school district is a very prestigious one that should have modern buildings that are comparable with its status. Uh, here's what Ron respondent said, I think you have to compete because if you don't update, make changes and modernize, you're not going to be at the top of the list of any longer, you're going to fall to the bottom. One of the things that we found out is, is that there was a strong sense of community pride that, that, that not only it was attached to the city itself, but also the school system. Also, there were few specific opinions and little consensus about what needed to be accomplished, um, but people were more valuable in talking about how to accomplish it. That is, do things as cheaply as possible. They were adamant about that. Um, one respondent said, the town likes to make everything wonderful because we have a great town. I'd say, let's fix what's wrong and not like build this ornate castle. Also, uh, signaling that it may be a contentious aspect, the group uh, was very divided about whether the building should undergo the minimum amount of work necessary or, or do something that, that might be a little bit more ambitious. Um, one respondent said, just because Olentangy schools are pretty nice, we don't need to make ours look pretty nice. And lastly, the high school was deemed to be the greatest uh, in need of a, improvement, and that was largely by inference, because people knew of its age. Um, but beyond that, there was no clear consensus about need for the other buildings. However, uh, when we started testing specific priorities for the buildings, in a broad sense, things that people were very animated in discussing were climate control, uh, science labs, and trailers, especially trailers. Um, frankly, that was something that, that they found particularly objectionable and garnered a lot of discussion during the session. One respondent said, I have a hard time dealing with the concept of the most prestigious high school in the state having trailers in the backyard for teaching their kids. So we used this information. We essentially said, why don't you tell us what's on the survey? We took this information and formulated our survey. And uh, we conducted the survey through telephone interviews performed by specially trained opinion research interviewers. That is, they weren't telemarketers who were trained to elicit an affirmative response. They were data gatherers who were trained to elicit a truthful response. Survey was conducted among 303 randomly selected registered voters residing within the Upper Arlington City School District using a combination of valid residential voice over internet protocol and cellular telephone listings. And the reason we use cellular telephone interviews now is to avoid a coverage error that would be created if we just relied on, say, landline service, since a lot of households no longer have that. The estimated margin of sampling error overall is 5.62%, and that results in a confidence interval of 11.24% 11 11 within which the results could vary. Just means when you factor in rounding, if we asked, what is your favorite topping on a pizza? If 50% of the respondents said black olives because of sampling variability, that number could be as low as about 44% to as high as about 56%. Data was stratified. Oh, uh, the interviews were conducted during the period of September 6th through September 9th, so this is very recent data. And the data was stratified so that differences in vital characteristics such as age, gender, and geography are represented in proportion of their percentages of the district's electorate. And the reason we did that is to prevent over or undersampling from in some way distorting the results. Uh, due to rounding, not all the results add up to 100%. The data is presented in a slightly different order than the questions were asked. We started the survey. Um, by trying to acclimate respondents to the survey taking process by asking them a few innocuous questions at the very beginning. For example, we asked respondents, would you say that Franklin County is going in the right direction or has it gotten off onto the wrong track? And, and really what we're trying to do is, is embolden people and bolster their confidence and their ability to participate. Um, nevertheless, th this data uh, can also yield some very useful insight about contentment or disenchantment in the community. As you can see, at the time the survey was taken, 72% of Upper Arlington City School District voters said that Franklin County was moving in the right direction. 6% said it had gotten off on the wrong track, 4% were unsure, and, or 4% volunteered mixed opinions, and 17% were unsure. The right direction for the city of Upper Arlington was 66%, with 27% saying it had gotten off onto the wrong track, 2% volunteering mixed opinions, and 6% being unsure. And keep in mind, this was on the heels of the recall, so that's actually a pretty impressive number given the turmoil that occurred. Looking at the Upper Arlington City School District, 73% of respondents said it's moving in the right direction, 12% say it's gotten off onto the wrong track, 
2% volunteered mixed opinions and 12% were unsure. Among parents, just among parents, that is people who at the time of the survey indicated that they had a child currently enrolled in an Upper Arlington City School District school, 87% said the school district was moving in the right direction. Just 8% said it had gotten off onto the wrong track. None of the respondents volunteered mixed opinions and just 5% were unsure. When we asked this very same question in 2014, 74% said that the school district was moving in the right direction compared with 73% this year, nearly an identical result. And that stability and consistency is a hallmark of a well-run organization, in my opinion. We also asked, would you say that property taxes in Upper Arlington are too high, mostly pretty fair, or too low? And the reason that we asked this question is because it was something that was raised repeatedly during the course of the focus group. At the time the survey was taken, 37% said property taxes were too high, 58% a majority said they were pretty fair, 1% said they were too low, and 4% were unsure. Looking at the subgroup results in the inset box, among parents, 28% said that property taxes were too high. It was 42% among non-parents, that is people who did not have a child enrolled in an Upper Arlington City School District school at the time the survey was taken. It's 45 percent for 18 to 29 year olds, just 22 percent for 30 to 44 year olds, 40 percent for 45 to 59 year olds, and 43 percent for respondents 60 and older. It was also 51 percent in the southernmost portion of the city in the 43212 zip code, which is just about 9 percent of the electorate. We also asked, in your opinion, how would you rate the job that the school district has done, uh, does communicating with parents and the public? 71% said very good or good, 16% said fair, 4% said poor or very poor, and 9% were unsure. Among parents, 86% said very good or good, compared to 65% of non-parents. It's a substantial difference, but still well above the 50% threshold. 84% of 30 to 44 year olds compared to 66% of respondents 60 and older. Also, when we asked the same question in uh, 2014, 72% said very good or good. So once again, a very consistent and stable sentiment over a two year period. We also asked, how would you rate the job that the Upper Arlington City School District does managing its finances? 60% said very good or good. 22% said fair, 6% said poor, very poor, and 11% were unsure. 69% of parents, but even 56% of non-parents said very good. Um, in 2014, it was actually five percentage points lower. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why is there such a disparity uh, between this measure and some of the others that we've seen? And that's not unusual because of the Byzantine process of financing and taxing for school districts, people don't understand it very clearly. And in the absence of, a, of that clarity, they, they tend to opt on the side of caution and, and be a little bit conservative in their ratings. So it's, it, it, it's not unusual for highly ranked school districts like this to be at or below the 50% threshold, yet you are well above it at this point in time. Another reassuring sign that the public has great confidence in what's being done in the school system. We also asked, how would you rate the quality of education being provided by the Upper Arlington City School District? 92%, 92%, 58% very good and 35% good. 3% said fair, 0% said poor, very poor, that's a zero. 4% were unsure. Among parents, 95%. 95%. When you think about the estimated margin of sampling error and the confidence interval, it's not unreasonable to hypoth hypothesize that that's a universal sentiment among parents, giving high marks for the quality of education. What's more impressive, though, is that 91% of non-parents said very good or good. Those differences were not statistically significant. There was an unacceptably high probability that those modest differences are due to chance. Or more simply put, your Assessment of the quality of education does not differ regardless of whether you're a parent or not. Highly unusual. Highly unusual. Typically, non-parents tend to rank lower in all these areas, yet in this case, the sentiment was a consistent one. When we asked the same question in 2014, once again, it was almost identical with 93% saying very good or good. Looking at 
views about facility needs, we asked, over the next few years, do you think that enrollment of students in the Upper Arlington City School District schools will increase, stay about the same, or decrease? And as I told you earlier, one of the things that we wanted to do in the focus group was let people tell us what was important to include on the survey. And during a review of some of the handout exercises, when we were talking about some of the goals that we were trying to accomplish, we, we indicated that one would be to prepare for future enrollment growth. And people were incredulous. A lot of respondents could not believe that that was possible. In fact, one respondent said, Upper Arlington is landlocked, can't get any more than it is. So I thought, this is probably something we need to test. And as you can see, 43% expect enrollment to increase, but 45%, a plurality, expected to say the same. So nearly half of the respondents who are voters in this community may not understand this discussion of need for f f enrollment growth, or pardon me, the need for expanding the facilities in order to accommodate enrollment growth. It may be completely out of context for them because they aren't expecting it, and in some cases, they can't even imagine it. Um, among parents, 65% expect the increase, but among non-parents, 33% expect an increase, just 33%, just one-third. And non-parents are the lion's share of the voters in this community. And it's not unusual to have differences in attitudes about things like the quality of education uh, when you're comparing parents and non-parents. But this is not really something that necessarily uh, would be gleaned by first-hand observation. So I did not expect this kind of disparity, that 32% differential between parents and non-parents, uh, which means it's something that the community at some point is going to have to be attuned to in order to make decisions about. We also asked, at this time, the school district is currently developing a plan to repair, renovate, or rebuild the school buildings. How much news and information have you heard, read, or seen about this idea? At the time the survey was taken, 31% said a lot, 36% said some, 18% said very little, 14% said nothing at all, none of the respondents were unsure. So much like we observed in the focus group, there, there, there was a lot of awareness of what was occurring, not surprising. When we added the percentage of people who say they've heard a lot with those who've heard some, we have 67% informed awareness. Looking at the inset blocks on the right, you can see among parents it's 90%, uh, compared to 56% for non-parents. So there's a big disparity there. Not surprising necessarily, um, but that's, that's nevertheless a large gap. Among future parents, it was just 55%. They were a small subsample of the electorate. There are people who said they do not have children currently enrolled in the school but expect to within the next five years. Among men, there was 56% awareness compared to 77% among women. So a sizable gender gap here as well. And among 18 to 29 year olds, it was 33% compared to 68% among respondents 60 and older. And I suspect some of that has to do with the readership of uh, the uh, weekly newspaper. We also asked, how would you rate the job that school leaders have done seeking input from the public about ideas and plans for repairing, renovating, or rebuilding school buildings? 53% said very good or good, 25% said fair, 17% said poor or very poor, and 6% were unsure. 79% of parents gave high marks in this area compared to just 40% of non-parents. We're below the 50% threshold here, as we are for a couple of the other key subgroups. Among future parents, it was just 28%. Among men, it was 43%. Once again, the gender gap emerged, compared to 63% for women. It's just 22% for 18 to 29-year-olds, who are about 10 to 11% of the electorate in this community. 69% for 30 to 44-year-olds. 61% for 45 to 59-year-olds, and 44% for respondents 60 and older. So clearly there are some opportunities here uh, to, to seek input from additional groups in the community, probably some subgroups that warrant a little more effort in the coming year. We also asked, how important do you think it is to repair, renovate, or rebuild the Upper Arlington school buildings? What we were looking at here is that intensity of sentiment, because the more strongly people feel about something, the more likely they are to act on that sentiment and the less likely they are to change their minds about it. 
So overall, 55% said it's very important. Compar parents uh, at 72% uh, exhibited greater intensity than non-parents at 47%. It was 69%, however, for future parents. It was also an interesting geographic difference. It's 43% in 43212 compared to 51% in zip code 43230 and 59% in zip code 43221. We also wanted to put some numbers behind a portion of the discussion that really dominated the focus group, and that was how much is too much? And so we wanted to approach it from a philosophical view. So we asked respondents, if you could choose at this time, would you prefer the school district to do as much as to the buildings to provide the most advanced education possible, or just do what needs to be done to ensure that the buildings remain serviceable? As much serviceable. As you can see, 67% said uh, most advanced uh, education possible. 27% said uh, just enough to uh, ensure that the buildings remain serviceable, and 6% were unsure. Among parents, 79% opted for the most advanced possible, compared to 61% of non-parents, still above that 50% threshold. 90% of future parents opted for the most advanced possible. It's just 51% in that small southern slice of the city uh, in zip code 43212. It's also an interesting uh, difference by age group. Among 18 to 29 year olds, 84% said the most advanced possible. And as you can see, it stays above the 50% threshold, even it's nadir at 53% for respondents 60 and older, but it clearly cascades downward. Tested this same concept from a different approach. This time we started talking in more concrete terms. So we asked, do you think it is more important to repair, renovate, or rebuild the school buildings even if taxes have to be increased, or prevent taxes from going up even if money has to be redirected from the classroom and instruction budget to make essential repairs? So now we're talking about a, a real trade-off, if you will. 63% opted to renovate, uh, repair, renovate, or rebuild, 28% uh, prefer to uh, uh, redirect money from the budget, even if uh, uh, redirect money from the classroom and instructional budget to make essential repairs, and 9% were unsure. As you can see from this contingency table, the results with this question and the previous one were pretty consistent. In fact, there was a strong level of association in the responses between the two questions. For example, among those who in the previous question said they'd opt for the most advanced possible, 78% of them also said they prefer to repair, renovate, or rebuild. Just 17% said they prefer to prevent taxes from going up. They're the people who want to have their cake and eat it too. On the other hand, among those who prefer to have uh, just enough done to keep the buildings uh, serviceable, 34% opt for repairing, renovating, or rebuilding, and 53% uh, prefer to prevent taxes from going up. So the results were pretty consistent no matter how you tested the concept. I also want to point out too that overall 28% said they prefer to prevent taxes from going up, uh, but it was 34% for non-parents, 35% for respondents in the 43212 zip code, and 48% for those who in a previous point in the survey said they thought property taxes in Upper Arlington were too high, not surprisingly. Looking at some of the various facility priorities and plans, uh, we read the respondents a battery of different uh, ideas or priorities and asked them to rank each one individually. For example, we asked how much of a priority should it be to have up-to-date science and technology labs? 78% said it should be a high priority. Not surprising. That's what we observed in the focus group as well. That was clearly the idea that garnered the most enthusiasm during the course of the session. 62% said it should be a high priority to make the building systems energy efficient to lower operating costs. Overall, 61% whoops, pardon me. Overall, 61% said it should be a high priority to ensure the buildings have updated security features to better prevent unauthorized intrusions. 50% said it should be a high priority to avoid the need to hold classes and trailers as enrollment growth occurs within the next few years. Now we're below the 50% threshold. 49% said it should be a high priority to expand the size of classrooms so they meet current educational standards. And just 39% said it 
said it should be a high priority to restructure the buildings to provide spaces that will allow students to work in group settings. And this was our attempt to more obliquely approach the, the somewhat opaque concept of collaboration, which we found out in the focus group that the respondents really didn't understand. Now, just looking at these results among parents, the rank order is fairly similar. However, 83% of parents, that's four out of, out of five, said it should be a high priority to have up-to-date science and technology labs. 66% said it should be a high priority to make the building systems energy efficient to lower operating costs. 73%, this was actually second among parents, said it should be a high priority to ensure the buildings have updated security features to better prevent unauthorized intrusions. By the way, I should mention, during the course of the session, nobody said the buildings are unsafe, and no one directed any criticisms uh, in that particular area. And again, sometimes the most important things you learn from focus groups are what people don't say. 61% said it should be a high priority to avoid the need to hold classes and trailers as enrollment growth occurs within the next few years. 60% said it should be a high priority to expand the size of classrooms so they meet current educational needs. And just 42% of parents said it should be a high priority to restructure the buildings to provide spaces that will allow students to work in group settings. Everything was above the 50% threshold except uh, restructuring the buildings for group settings. Among non-parents, it was a slightly different story. The rank order was identical, um, but the percentages of respondents saying they were high priorities were not as great. For example, 75% of non-parents said it should be a high priority to have up-to-date science and technology labs. 60% said it should be a high priority to make the building systems energy efficient to lower operating costs. 55% said it should be a high priority to ensure the buildings have updated security features to better prevent unauthorized intrusions. 44% said it should be a high priority to avoid the need to hold classes and trailers as enrollment growth occurs within the next few years. Now we're below the 50% threshold. 44% said it should be a high priority to expand the size of classrooms so they meet current educational standards. And just 38% said it should be a high priority to restructure buildings to provide spaces that will allow students to work in group settings. We also tested some specific ideas, uh, that is facility plans, if you will. For example, 61% overall said it was a good idea to rebuild the high school building. And we actually tested this concept a couple of different ways using what's known as split sample testing. So I'm going to talk more about that in a moment. But the consolidated results show that 61% uh, think it's a good idea, just 31% think it's a bad idea, and only 8% were unsure. Much like we saw in the focus group set session itself. People talked about the high school, they could explain their reasons for supporting the idea, even though they lacked some urgency, frankly, um, but, but they generally understood the reasons that the district's exploring this. 44% said it's a good idea to acquire private property along Brandon Road to increase the amount of parking and athletic field space at the high school. 46% a plurality said it's a bad idea, 10% were unsure. Overall, 41% said it's a good idea to acquire private property next to the Jones Middle School so that tennis courts could be relocated and there would be additional room for school expansion. 43% said it was a bad idea, 16% were unsure. 41% said it was a good idea to rebuild the original portion of the Barrington Elementary School building that was built in 1923. 41%, we'll talk about that number in just a moment. 36% said it was a bad idea and 24% were unsure a high percentage of uh, what we call non-attitudes, although there may have been some consternation surrounding this matter, and I'll explain why I feel that way in a moment. 31% said it's a good idea to rebuild the high school stadium on a different portion of the same site in order to create enough space for more baseball and softball diamonds and additional parking, and a whopping 58% said it was a bad idea. A statistical majority, 11% were unsure. Now, looking at the results among parents, 72% said it was a good idea to rebuild the high school building. Higher support there. 56% said it was a good idea to acquire private property along Brandon Road to increase the amount of parking and athletic field space at the high school, also above the 50% threshold, even though it wasn't in the aggregate. 
And 53%, a statistical majority, also said it was a good idea to acquire private property next to Jones Middle School so that tennis courts can be re relocated and there would be additional room for school expansion. Now we drop below the 50% uh, percent threshold, actually rather precipitously, when we get to rebuilding the original portion of the Barrington Elementary School that was built in 1923. Just 34% say it was a good idea. I want you to remember that number. 38% say it was a bad idea and 28% were unsure. There's no conclusive data about the sentiments among parents. Different story with non-parents though and I think you might be surprised. Rebuilding the high school stadium on a different portion of the same site in order to create enough space for more baseball and softball diamonds and additional parking was deemed a good idea by 42% of parents but 48% a plurality said it's a bad idea 10% were unsure. Looking at non-parents, 56% say it's a good idea to rebuild the high school building, well above the 50% threshold, but the only one of the ideas tested uh, that performed that strongly. Just 38% said it should be a good idea to acquire private property along Brandon Road to increase the amount of parking and athletic field space at the high school. 36% said it should be a good idea to acquire private property next to Jones Middle School so that tennis courts can be relocated and there would be additional room for expansion. 44%, remember we talked earlier about parents, at 34% thinking it was a good idea to rebuild the original portion of the uh, Barrington Elementary School that was built in 1923. It actually garners a plurality of respondents saying it's a good idea among non-parents. That's highly unusual. Typically parents are, are more predictably more supportive of these ideas. This is very rare to see a higher level of support among non-parents for any particular aspect like this. And I'm not sure why that is, but I thought it was intriguing nevertheless. I suspect that nostalgia may have something to do with it. 26% said it's a good idea to rebuild the high school stadium on a different portion of the same site in order to create enough space for more baseball and softball diamonds and additional par parking. A whopping 63% said it was a bad idea, roundly rejecting it, and 11% were unsure. Uh, I talked a moment ago about uh, something called split sample testing uh, that we did to look at the high school. And, and there was a reason that we did that. What we did is we programmed the computer to randomly assign respondents to one of two versions of the same question. And there was a reason that we did that. One of the things that we found during the focus group is, is that there was a high degree of community pride and one of the things that people talked about that seemed to be a core value in the community was the desire to compete if you will. So we wanted to test the efficacy of that work. I, I'm going to very quickly read you an excerpt from the focus group report. Most compared Upper Arlington to two of the area's most rapidly growing districts with new buildings, the Dublin City School District and New Albany Plain Local School District as well as the more established Worthington City School District. It was a juxtaposition that some of the respondents seemed to proudly value and it was evident that prestige was an important community attribute to them. When asked, many candidly admitted it was very important to compete. We went back and reviewed the focus group transcripts and the word compete was used 12 times by respondents during the course of the session. Uh, here's what one respondent said. I came here for the schools and the other people, like-minded people, came for the schools. I would rank it pretty high when they were talking about the importance of competing. So what we did is we tested two different versions of the same concept. Version A, which was asked to hasp the respondents, uh, asks, uh, do you think it's a good or bad idea to rebuild the high school building in order to have a new one that will have the kind of infrastructure and science labs needed to offer advanced classes that are vital to helping students get accepted to top colleges? 61% said that was a good idea, 32% said it was a bad idea, 7% were unsure. In version B, which is asked to the other half of the respondents, they were asked, do you think it's a good or bad idea to rebuild the high school in order to have a new one that will have, more, have adaptable learning spaces and classrooms that can keep up with a changing world in order to ensure that students remain competitive and can help them get accepted to co top colleges? In that slightly different version, 61% said it was a good idea, 30% said it was a bad idea, and 9% were unsure. So support is uh, pretty strong across the board regardless of the justification for the idea. And that was, as I said, the most popular aspect uh, that was tested both in the survey and the focus group. Um, finally, I'd like to conclude with a couple of interpretations 
that is key takeaways that I think might be valuable to uh, understand my perspective as someone who reviews this type of data on a regular basis. First and foremost, amid exceptionally high performance ratings in all key areas, there are a few palpable concerns about core functions that would preclude the public from considering a building revitalization, revitalization plan on its own merits. Simply put, there are going to be few, if any, people who say, you don't deserve this because you haven't done a good job educating our children, you haven't done a good job communicating, or you haven't done a good job managing finances. Clearly, that's not the case here. Second, the high school appears to be the marquee facility around which a consensus for replacement exists. While features such as improved security, new climate control systems, and updated science and technology labs may be aspects that bolster interest in upgrading other buildings. Third, overall, it appears that there is as much or perhaps more interest in the byproducts of building improvements, such as greater access to advanced educational content and students who are more poised to compete for top colleges. That is, simply put, there's more interest in what will happen in the buildings than what will happen to the buildings, which is, is an important posture to take as you're talking to the community about this idea so they're fully informed about the impact. Fourth, there is a mandate to do more than merely the minimum, but the threshold for what the community is willing to fund will only become clear once a comprehensive plan with a price tag is presented to the public. It is obvious that the community expects a very delicate balance between austere pragmatism and buildings commensurate with the caliber of education that is being offered. And lastly, what is more clear is that there is a propitious climate for considering facilities improvements as the public appears sincerely interested and receptive to the idea, something we also observed in the focus group including the many residents who do not have children in school, but it can be inferred from the result, may have feel their stake in the matter is just as great because of the immense pride that exists in this community. Now with that, I'd like to open the floor for any questions anyone has. So, any of the board members would like to ask Paul questions? Mm. There's a lot to, to digest. Um, so when we're looking at the high school stadium, being moved, and we had 31% that thought it was a good idea, and 58% thought it was a bad idea. Was that, was there other numbers there uh, as far as um, opinion, or was that primarily they were, you know, uh, thinking it was more of a bad idea than a good idea on, on that state? We did not test it beyond that question, but, but I think there was a strong sentiment uh, in opposition to the idea in that form. Now there may be other ways of presenting this idea that provide additional information that might change people's views, mm -hmm. but this was the information we had available at the time. Okay. And then when you're looking at um, acquiring land on Brandon Road for the high school to allow parking and athletic field space at the high school, it seemed to be almost nearly split with a 44% and a 46% good and bad idea. How, how do you view that? Well, I, I think parents clearly, oops, parents clearly understand the value of doing so, but non-parents uh, are, are probably going to need to have uh, an opportunity to explore that idea more closely, because mm -hmm. it's clearly the lion's share of non-parents in opposition that, that is uh, making this, uh, the tenability of this okay. questionable. Yeah. Well, I had the benefit of hearing this presentation earlier, and so I'm still thinking about everything, but it, it is really um, helpful. There's a lot of good information, and I think uh, once we all digest it, we may have more questions. So, talk to Karen. Unlike my clients in the other 38 states, I do live just down the road. I could jog if, if I was so inclined. Um, I wanted to ask you about that cross tabs question, the 34, um, one about uh, uh, the advanced education versus uh, prevent taxes going up. And um, I wanted to ask your opinion to explain to me, yeah, well, nope, that other one. This is the most advanced possible versus remaining serviceable. Is that the one you're referring to? Next slide, okay. Um, 
what do you what can you tell me that it means about um, that 34 percent um, column the remain serviceable and renovate repair or rebuild does that mean that can I infer anything from that 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 um, we have a lot of people out there who um, are uh, willing to be taxed um, I mean that says to me they're willing to be taxed even if what we're doing is um, uh, not the most advanced possible. Is that, is that what, you what, what this says to me is that people understand the need to do something and understand that there's a cost, a trade-off, if you will. Um, whether or not they're willing to support a tax increase by voting for it is a different question, however. Right. I don't think we're at a point where we could put a price tag to anything or talk about the specifics of the financing plan in order to test it at this point. Right. But you're absolutely right. At some point, the district needs to know um, what support is based on what package is put before voters and what the cost will be. Those will both be important elements in the decision-making process. I've got a question for you, Pat. Sure. On the awareness um, where we're communicating um, that we need to develop this plan, um, we look through, you, you showed that we look through, and primarily there is a lot of above 50%, except for the 18 to 29 year olds. Uh, I think you sort of showed that at 33%. Um, do you have that down to a zip code, as um, in the other areas you showed us based on zip code? Is there an area in Upper Arlington that is a little bit more aware because of their situ where they're situated in the zip code? Or did we look at that? There were a few geographic differences, but I couldn't parse it down by geography in that age because, because the uh, subsample sizes would be too small. Okay, okay. What did you make of any of the zip code differences? I mean, I just look at that and I think, oh, uh, that, this is the one I live in. This must be the people like me, but they're all people like me. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not necessarily sure what, uh, what level of importance I would assign to that. Okay. In fact, if I were making decisions about who, who uh, warrants more information at this point in time, I, I would probably look at other things like whether or not you've got a child enrolled in school and perhaps your age, and, and clearly gender. Yeah. There's a substantial gender gap uh, that exists as it relates to information. Yeah. Well. You mentioned in the previous presentation, I just want clarification, that the 303 people who were sampled were reflective of the Arlington community in terms of what, what did you base that criteria? Age, gender, and geography. Okay. So we use stratification to ensure that, that, that the uh, data is representative of, of the electorate. So, as you mentioned before, if you made a phone call to a certain individual and they did not answer or chose not to answer, then you moved on to a similar... We did not use quotas, per se. Uh, what we did is, is we used something known as post-hoax stratification to adjust the data okay. so using weighting okay. to make up for minor differences okay. so that groups that were over or under sampling, sampled were ultimately represented in proportion to their percentage of the electorate. Paul, another question for you. Um, you know, we talked about um, the awareness of our buildings, and then we also talked about the awareness of the increased enrollment seems to be um, lower as far as um, communication. Is, is there anything in between those two that is, that we're just not getting that message out? I mean... I, I think uh, awareness is high, but frankly, the focus group suggests to me that the depth of knowledge is pretty limited, okay. actually. So you would suggest as far as getting that enrollment, uh, you need to do a better job on getting that? If, that, if that's ultimately one of the remedies that you pursue as a part of this process, that, that is to ensure that the school can adequately meet enrollment trends in the future, uh, because it, it just is not something that, that is obvious mm -hmm. to respondents. This isn't a high growth community. It's built out and it's hard for people to understand why there may be a surge in enrollment at some point. Okay. 
And then did we, I know we didn't have any questions that I could see. Did we test um, anyone's awareness of, other than the high school, Barrington and the Jones um, situations? Did we test elementary schools or? Um, in the 2014 survey, we asked about views of the high school, the middle schools, and the elementary schools. And, and what was the conclusion of that? Uh, people were largely uh, inclined to say that the conditions were adequate. Just adequate? Yeah. Okay. And parents were even more inclined to give that answer, which suggests to me that parents probably are, are not yet at a point where they fully appreciate what can be done here. Okay. Again, it's about what happens in the classroom, not right. what happens in the building mm -hmm. that seems to matter most to people. Mm -hmm. But keeping it on a competitive edge to be, to keep that ranking in the state, you do have to improve the inside of these buildings to keep up with. And, and that status is coveted. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you cleared that up. I feel like I'm asking a lot of questions. I have a question about, about the stratification of the ages. Um, we know that older people tend to vote more. Is, can we, can we um, extract from this data an idea of, you know, that uh, a weighting towards older people's opinion? Well, or is that not, <coughs> we don't, or, or, or is there that same strategy? First and foremost, they, they, were, they, were, they were not just People, they were adults, and they weren't just adults; they were registered voters. Oh, so keep that. Mind. We we used we used a registered voter file, yeah. so they were all voters, and they were represented in proportion to their percentage of the electorate. But turnout varies from election to election and subgroup to subgroup. Okay. So, in your general opinion, then looking at all the um, the full scale of. Um, uh, polling and the surveys and the focus groups, would you say um, more than 50% then feel that there needs to be something done as far as rebuilding, repairs, or renovating? I, I can say with great confidence that people are receptive to the idea of doing so. Need is not something I'm willing to necessarily go out on a limb and embrace. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Paul, well, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me this evening. Thank you very much. Okay. We can make a, um, I am asking for a motion to adjourn, please. I'll move to adjourn. I'll second. Okay. Mrs. Royer? Aye. Mrs. Therese? Aye. Mrs. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Comfort? Aye. Thank you all very much. Thank and you. The meeting is adjourned.